So welcome to the second in our series on software testing. And today we're gonna to be talking about test-driven development, done with unit tests. So stick with us. Let me explain. Here yeah, it goes. A's for ambition. Be what I want to be. See past the situation that's in front of me. Doubt is an enemy. That we say. Now, another kind of testing that a lot of people do with their software is they actually write their software based on a set of tests. And they write a, a bunch of tests into their software um, via unit tests or other methods. Again, there's, I suppose, two broad philosophies here as well. So the the late 90s extreme programming movement, XP, um, championed what was called test-driven development. So this was, um, as he puts it, a rediscovery by a man called Kent Beck. So he wrote a book on test-driven development, and it's still it's brilliant. Read it. It's great. All the answers are in it. And it came out in about 99, 2001. I forget the exact um, date. And he basically went back and read a bunch of manuals from when people were developing for mainframes. And they were talking about taking the tape with the output of their program and comparing it to their expectation. And he'd stumbled upon and rediscovered this, this declarative programmatic notion of, yeah, cool. So I'm going to write a test that says what my program is going to do. Then I'm going to run it and then I'm going to check it. And I remember this wonderful quote, which I will butcher in the surmising of where he went back and talked to all the programmers and they were just like, yeah, like how else do you write software? What? Like, yeah, of course, that's what we do. So it was kind of amusingly rediscovered in the, the, during the rise of extreme programming and agile. And um, the interesting thing about test-driven development is it's not really about testing at all. It's about software design. So it's, a, it's about driving out behaviors of your software through test specification. So that's kind of one, one thing. And then you've got unit tests. And unit tests live in the same space, and they often use the same tools. So depending on... For a layman, what is a unit test? So the, the, the irony is that's a nuanced answer. So a unit test tests a single function in your program. That's the, the simplest possible definition of it. Whereas a TDD test tests some behavior of your program. Now that they, when you say it so quickly, they sound like they're the same thing. But the difference is that there's this notion of the unit of isolation of a test, whereas a unit test tests one thing and one thing only, whereas a TDD test tests one piece of behavior and one piece of behavior only. And actually, that was the path that led to more sophisticated forms of testing like behavior driven development. There's a there's kind of a path there that was, was trodden by XP and TDD at the start. Um, ultimately, and, and I remember reading this wonderful, I can't remember who said it. There was a great quote, which was, um, I've worked with all sorts of tests, all sorts of, of programmer written tests in my career. And I'll tell you that it doesn't matter whether you do BDD or TDD or you do unit testing. What really matters is that when your software breaks, a test fails. And that's kind of the thing that's, uh, that's nice and in common between the, the, both, both of these styles is that they're meant to break when you change something for the worse, not just when you add to the software. Now, I think one of the things you alluded to was there has been a sort of shift in culture from those who maybe programmed in the early 2000s and the 90s. People that have learned programming more recently might have learned it with this test-driven development methodology which is you build a test and then you build a function that fulfills that test. Um, now, what a lot of the older programmers might say to someone running a development team or managing a technology company would be that it takes a lot of resources to build these tests into your software. Why would you bother doing that? Great question. Uh, very, very simple analogy. When you go to the doctors to have some open heart surgery on, do you turn to the doctor and say, hey, you know what, mate? I want to get in and out really quickly. Don't worry about cleaning your tools. Like if you clean your tools, like I reckon the guy before me wasn't infected with anything weird. I'm just going to go in, just, you know, just get it in and done. To me, it's the same kind of um, professional rigor and discipline, ultimately. So I think there's, there's a couple of things that led us to this point. Software was certainly simpler. In, in the 90s, and when I say simpler, I mean the expected pace of development was far, far longer. So people were living in a world of box software and perfect Goldmaster releases that were shipped once and never changed. 
certainly post 2010, when people expect web applications and things that have same day, same week updates, many times a day updates, the testing patterns that fit box software burnt onto CD-ROMs just don't fit anymore with software that's delivered instantly. If we stick to box software, manual testing teams that act as a gated, um, a, a gate to shipping pieces of software to the internet, actually what would happen is another company would come and build your product while you are still testing it. So I think there's been a bit of a philosophical change there. Um, from a, a programmer's perspective, I think that the more interesting thing is the systems have got bigger and become more compartmentalized. Often actually most uh, developers don't really touch the whole surface area of the software they're working on, especially large web applications. Uh, you, you'll find that the odds of one programmer ever touching the whole system is quite low. So actually the tests are their interface onto the software. So it's not really so much that it's an additional cost or an additional thing that you maintain. And by all means, badly written tests can be a burden. And there are ways to write tests well and, to, and ways to write tests badly. But ultimately, your tests are your production code. They're just another interface. They're just another way into your software. But they're the, they're the door into your software that faces your programmers and gives them a meaningful and deterministic way to, to drive change through the system. Like it, it's, they're not optional, ultimately, as far as I'm concerned. They, just, they look like cost if they're not communicated well. No, I do agree with you. I was just asking a rhetorical question. <laughs> As software has become more complicated, tests have really shown their value. 